Okay, I feel like I have so many people who are my subscribers and I even feel like I know a lot of you all are low porosity so the video that I am bringing to y'all today is going to be very very helpful and very very informative so let's go ahead and jump into it but before we do that of course if you are not already part of the Curly Chris family okay if you are not already subscribed I'm gonna do the one thing for you girl okay one thing only, and that is to smash that button down below. Smash that button down below. Go ahead and hit it just like you mean it, and go ahead and claim your seat at the table because we have one ready and waiting just for you. All right, y'all, so let's go ahead and hop into today's video. So, like I was saying, today's video is all about low porosity do's and don'ts. A few of my videos back, I asked you all how many of my family members are low porosity. Drop me in the comments below in that video. And I had so many people say that they were low porosity. And the reason why I asked that question was because I wanted to make today's video. I am low porosity, as all of you know. And if you are new here, then yes, your girl is low porosity, okay? And I have learned so much over time by being low porosity and I wanted to put it all into one video of all the tips that I utilize to really help my natural hair and the tips that I have learned from and benefited from so so much okay so y'all already know how I am with my notes I have everything I'm going to talk about written down because I cannot forget anything so we're going to be going through the do's and the don'ts of being low porosity from washing to styling the whole nine so I'm going to combine the do's and the don'ts together um, and you'll be able to follow it throughout the video. Don't worry or anything. So let's jump into it. So what is low porosity? Okay. So low porosity means that your hair has a hard time accepting moisture. So your hair cuticles, which is the outer part of the hair shaft, is much more tight. Okay. It's very, very tight and that makes you low porosity, meaning moisture has a hard time getting into your hair shaft and cuticle. So high porosity means you have looser, not as tight hair cuticles, okay? So that's why with low porosity hair, it may take your hair, it, it, it will take your hair longer to dry because your hair has to accept all the moisture that, you, that you're giving it. And it also takes your hair longer to just accept it whenever you're wetting your hair. It takes a longer period of time to accept that moisture. Now once the moisture is in low porosity hair, typically it has an easier time keeping that moisture in, whereas in high porosity, as quickly as you gain it, you can lose it just as quickly, okay? So let's go ahead and get into the do's and don'ts. So first and foremost, do wash with warm water. Do not wash with cold or cool water, okay? That is so important, y'all. And I tell you, that is a tip that I, it's probably number one on my list of how to improve your low, pro, how to cater to your low porosity hair. Warm water opens up the hair shaft, opens up the hair follicle. The follicle is at your root, the shaft is along your hair strand. Warm water opens that up, okay? So you want to, you want to implement warm water from washing to deep conditioning to rinsing out your deep conditioners everything you have to use warm water with low porosity hair our hair needs that warm water so it can help our hair accept that moisture because our follicles and strands are open okay so whenever your hair shaft is open more product more moisture is able to seep into your hair shaft and strand and cuticle do not wash with cold water because cold water seals cold water closes okay and never in a washing routine do you want to close or seal your hair off now there there is a hair myth in the natural hair community, in my opinion, where high porosity natural should rinse with cold water because that's going to seal the hair off and somehow help with moisture. That is something I not agree with, but that's a whole other topic for a whole other time, okay? But as far as this tip, I do not ever recommend to use cold water because you do not want to seal 
your hair off in the washing process, in the deep conditioning process. There's so much more moisture to be added to our hair down the line in our wash day to where we don't want to seal it off too early because we're going to prevent our hair from accepting that moisture, okay? And if you are low porosity, you never want to do anything to prevent your hair from accepting moisture. You don't want to seal any type of cuticles, any type of hair shaft, you want to keep that open and we're going to use something in our styling process to seal, which I'm going to also get into. So do wash with warm water, do not wash with cold or cool water. And whenever I say warm water, I mean warm, not hot, not steaming, you want it to be warm. All right, so next, do wash in sections do not wash all in one and when i say wash in sections the reason why i say this is because with low porosity our hair already has a hard time being drenched and soaked with water so if you're only applying water to the surface the water is not really getting in especially if you're high density that water is not getting throughout your entire like all the layers of your hair so you have to split that hair into sections initially when shampooing or cleansing your hair I highly recommend to split your hair just with your hands to split in four or more sections. Um, and whenever I say split, I mean just, you know, pulling it apart, letting the water get there, pulling it apart again, letting the water get there. And then of course you're going to wash in multiple sections, but as, as far as wetting all of your layers, before you even apply a shampoo, you have to make sure that your hair is thoroughly drenched everywhere so you have to use your fingers to open up that hair and to allow that water to get into all the layers of your hair especially if you're a high density meaning you have a lot of hair on your head okay so do split your hair and wet your hair thoroughly do not just wash on the surface or wet the surface only all right so now that we're on the shampooing part of this highly 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 recommend do clarify your hair consistently do not only co-wash okay you all know that I am a fan of co-washing however when I say to clarify or cleanse consistently you have to have a routine for me it's typically every two weeks I clarify or cleanse my hair the reason why you have to cleanse your hair as low porosity honestly any porosity but the reason why you really have to do that is because if your hair has built up at the root there's absolutely no way for water or moisture of any sort to even be able to seep into your hair shaft or a strand or follicle especially if you're low porosity your hair cuticle is already very very tight so you have build up on top of that there's no way for your hair to accept that water or moisture so you have to be cleansing your hair now I recommend to use a clarifying shampoo that does not strip I have plenty of shampoos that are my favorites in my natural hair favorites um, video where I did a week of my favorites I talked about a lot of clarifying shampoos that do not leave the hair feeling stripped I highly recommend to watch that video if you need some pointers on which ones I'm speaking about. So do not confuse this with saying only clarify your hair and that's it. I'm not saying that at all. I'm still, you know, I, I still do like to co-wash my hair, but I also cleanse my hair and I have a consistent routine that I follow switching between co-washing and shampooing. Our hair typically is not dirty after seven days to have to completely strip everything so I shampoo every other week that's just my regimen and I co-wash in between then and that works out perfectly for me sometimes never the summer months I do shampoo more and then co-wash less um, it just depends on what I feel like my hair needs at that moment after shampooing you do want to rinse with warm water do not rinse with cold water once again you have to use warm water throughout your entire routine now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about a little deep conditioning, okay? Do deep condition with heat, okay? That is so important. Do not just leave a deep conditioner on your hair for five minutes in the shower and think you're done. No ma'am, no sir. Not how it works, okay? It's not how, that ain't how we, that ain't how we rolling over here. You have to deep condition with heat for 30 to 45 minutes. Once again, with heat heat okay the reason why a deep conditioning process is so important is because deep conditioning helps to allow the product to really seep into your hair strand okay it creates a greenhouse effect effect essentially so a greenhouse effect as in the moisture is being trapped into your hair so it's forcing it it's forcing your hair to accept it with heat whenever you deep condition the heat once again heat opens up 
So it opens up the hair shaft, the hair cuticle, the hair follicle. It's opening all of that up and allowing your hair to accept all the moisture that you're presenting to it. If you're, if you're not deep conditioning, you're limiting the amount of product and benefits your hair could actually have because our hair needs that extra push to accept all that moisture that we're trying to give it, okay? And that's what we get from the deep conditioning process. So I stress this so much. You have to deep condition with heat 30 to 45 minutes with a shower cap on. Now there is plenty of ways for you to deep condition. Let's talk about a few. One is with a hooded dryer, of course. Put your shower cap on, get underneath the hooded dryer for 30 to 45 minutes. Another way is to steam. No shower cap, but just applying a steamer to your hair and running the steamer through your hair. Or there's even those hooded steamers where the steam comes out of the hood and that is also great penetration. Then there's also a thermal heat cap, which you pop into the microwave and then you put your shower cap on and put that on top and it stays warm for 30 to 45 minutes hence deep conditioning okay and if we really 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 want to talk about improvising you can even wet a towel pop that towel into the microwave get it real real hot put a shower cap on your head wrap the towel around your hair and then put something on top of that towel to lock in all that heat once again deep conditioning so you really have no excuse, okay? If you don't have a towel, that means you're not washing yourself, which means ha, we have bigger problems. So there's no excuse for you to not deep condition in this era and this natural hair, okay? I don't, there's no excuse, okay? All right, so do deep condition, do not not deep condition. Do deep condition with heat, do not not stay in no shower for five minutes in deep condition. I know I just had like a few double negatives, but ha, mind your business. All right, let's keep it popping. So now that we have rinsed out that deep conditioner, like I said earlier, rinse it out with warm water, okay? You want to do apply your leave-in conditioner in the shower. Do not wait until your hair is dry and more water has escaped to apply a leave-in conditioner. Let's chat about it, okay? So I am saying to apply your leave-in conditioner in the shower. Hear me out, sis, okay? Think about it. After you have deep condition, okay, you have rinsed your hair out with that warm water. Your hair is up here with moisture, definition, juiciness, bounciness. You want to immediately meet it with that exact same thing instead of rinsing out that deep conditioner and then letting your hair dry out and then applying the leave-in conditioner. No, ma'am. You want to maximize on all of the moisture. So as soon as you rinse out that deep conditioner, you want to immediately meet it with some more moisture, aka your leave-in conditioner, okay? Immediately apply your leave-in conditioner in the shower to soaking wet hair. That's very, very important. Why soaking wet hair? Water is moisture, especially warm water for low porosity hair. Warm water is going to open up, once again, the hair shaft and the hair follicles. And then by water being moisture, you are setting yourself up for a successful styling process because the basis of the moisture is going to come from that leave-in conditioner. So you want to apply that when your hair is the most wet and can accept the product the most. You never want to apply a leave-in conditioner on dry or drier hair. You want to apply it on wet hair. And the reason why I don't recommend to apply it outside the shower is because typically in that water bottle, you don't have warm water. So you're re-wetting your hair with colder water and then applying a leave-in conditioner. You're not gonna get the maximum amount of benefits out of your leave-in conditioner. Why not just do it all in one in the shower in sections? When you apply that leave-in conditioner, make sure you are applying it in the same section that you deep conditioned, if not more. Once again, you have to make sure your hair is thoroughly receiving the product, all of the layers of your hair. Now, I'm about to put y'all up on some more game real quick, okay? After you have applied that leave-in conditioner in those sections, then apply a shower cap back onto your head and then get out the shower. Now, the reason for that is because you're creating a greenhouse effect once again. You're forcing your hair to accept all the moisture from that leave-in conditioner. And since when I tell you your hair is going to thank you, your hair gonna be like, yo! Keep doing this to me and this feels good. You hear me? Like that is what you need, sis. You have to apply that leave-in conditioner in the shower, put that cap on, and then take that cap off when you're ready to style? What? 
sis, you are setting yourself up for some juiciness. Come on, come through curls, okay? That is exactly what you need for your wash day. And what you'll even notice as well is your hair will start to retain that moisture more throughout that styling process. So you won't even have to apply that much more water to your hair. If you have applied and used the leave-in conditioner tip before leave, applying a leave-in conditioner in the shower, if you use that, comment down below your testimony. <laughs> Let them know your testimony. If you don't believe me, scroll down, read them comments, okay? All right, so now that we are out of the shower, now we're gonna talk about a little styling, okay? So do use the LCO method. Do not use the LOC method. Let's talk about it. The LCO, meaning leave-in or liquid, um, I, I, I refer to it as leave-in. So leave-in, cream, and then oil. LOC means leave-in, oil, and then cream. Now the reason why I only, only recommend the LCO method is because I recommend to seal at the very end of your wash day routine. That is to seal in all the moisture that you have applied to your hair. If you seal too early on in the game, for instance, after that leave-in conditioner, you are blocking off and sealing in a product that's not your most moisturizing product. You're not gonna get any type of long-lasting moisture from a leave-in conditioner only, okay? You have to seal in all of the moisture. So you don't wanna put an oil, layer on an oil too early, because that's gonna one, seal in that leave-in conditioner, and two, prevent the amount of moisture that your hair could have benefited from, from that cream. It's gonna eliminate a little bit of that moisture because whenever you apply an oil, that blocks off and seals. So you're gonna be sealing and blocking off anything else that comes after that oil. And your cream is your most moisturizing product, so you do not wanna block that off too early in your routine. You want to seal after the cream. So you want to seal in all the moisture after you have applied it all. Do you feel me? Do you feel me? Okay. With the LOC method, which once again, I feel like is a highly misguided, <laughs> recommended method in the natural hair industry. I will never get behind sealing in a liquid or a leave-in and then leaving the cream just all willy nilly by itself. I will never understand that. And I know some people say like, you know, type four naturals do the LOC method because you are sealing in that moisture from the L and that's the liquid and they say you have to seal in the water, but that's not how water works. You can't seal in water. Water's gonna dry out, okay? Now if you put a cup of water somewhere and then a cup of leave-in conditioner somewhere, which one's gonna evaporate first? If that leave-in conditioner evaporates, you have issues inside of your home, okay? That water is going to evaporate. So it doesn't really matter, like, apply, like sealing in a, like, sealing in water with oil or a liquid with oil. That's not going to give you moisture, okay? Because that water is going to escape regardless. In my opinion, <laughs> don't waste your time in the comment section coming for me. I've thought about this. I've researched this and everything. This is something that, in my opinion is very misleading the natural hair community, okay? I highly recommend to seal in that liquid, I mean that leave-in and that cream together with the oil at the end. That way you're sealing in all of the moisture. Do you feel me, okay? Let me know if you feel me in the comment section down below. All right, so another do. Do style with creams and butters. Do not style with non-creams and butters. <laughs> So the reason why I say to style with creams or butters, you all know as low, por low porosity I am, I love to do twist outs on my hair. Now the reason why I do twist outs is because twist outs give me moisture. It leaves my hair moisturized. If you look at the face value of a cream versus a gel, let's just take it for what it is, a cream is for moisture, okay? A gel is for definition. A cream moisturizes and relies on the style for definition. A gel is going to define and is and for that moisture is going to be something you have to apply before that gel. That gel is there for definition, okay? So that's just the face value of a gel versus a cream. I understand there's different types of gels out there. I, I get it, okay? I'm just talking about the basics between a cream and a gel. So for low porosity, you are focused on moisture. Honestly, 
any porosity. You are focused on moisture. So a cream, you're going to get more moisture out of it than a gel. And then for a butter, depending on if it's been water-based or oil slash butter-based, that's a big difference as well. That is also could that could also give you moisture, okay? So I recommend I love doing twist outs on my hair because by being low porosity, my hair needs a lot of moisture and I get all that from those creams and butters. I don't recommend gels because for me, I know there's all kinds of gels on the market. However, for me, um, if I'm not layering my gel with a cream first, I typically don't use gels because they end up leaving my hair pretty dry and I don't like to have drier hair. I don't, I just don't. I prefer to have more moisturized hair so I use creams and butters. I'm not saying all wash and goes leave your hair dry but if we're comparing the two just face value, typically you get more moisturized results with a twist out than a wash and go. Let's just be honest with it, okay? Because since we are at the end of the wash day, my last do is to seal with an oil and we already talked about that earlier about how I recommend to seal with an oil at the end of your styling process to seal in all the moisture that you have applied to your hair, okay? Also, another reason why I don't recommend to rinse with cold water for your deep conditioners because you are sealing at the end of your process with the oil, okay? There's no need, in my opinion, to rinse out with warm water after deep conditioning because you're going to be sealing later on and you don't want to seal too early in your process. That is my opinion. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, so one little small thing um, that I also wanted to mention is that for low porosity, um, you never want to style on dry hair because water, once again, is the basis of moisture. So if you're not styling on soaking wet hair, then your styles will more than likely come out to be dry because you're styling on dry hair, okay? So I highly recommend for you to style on moisturized wet hair and then you will get more so moisturized results in the end, okay? As far as how long your moisture lasts, that's highly going to be dependent upon your routine, how consistent you are with it, what process do you use, what products do you use, but more so your technique and your routine. That right there is very, very important. If you do need assistance with figuring out a routine and a technique catered to you, I do offer natural hair consultations where we do develop a personalized routine and it's a one-on-one -on -one consultation via Zoom. So no matter where you are in the world, you can most definitely host one. Um, I will leave that link down below as well. And go ahead and book that consultation if you do need assistance with your routine, products, or even your twist out, there's an option for that as well. Oh yeah, and this is the three strand twist out, by the way, the video that I just recently uploaded. So those are my do's and don'ts for low porosity natural hair. Let me know in the comment section down below what you all think about these tips. Do you follow them? I want to know down below, okay? Thank you all so much for coming to today's video. I know it was a bit long-winded. However, I just wanted to really get all these tips out for you guys. I really do hope you all are able to benefit from them. Let me know in the comment section down below if you are new to your girl's channel. I hope you return, okay? And I hope you also have smashed that button by now down below. If you did, welcome to the family. And I'm going to see you guys, as always, in my next video. Peace.